Hey folks, it's Nate, and today I've got something exciting to show you. For the first time in my career as a YouTuber, a company has reached out to me with a product that isn't available to the world yet. For my opinions and my review. So, let me introduce you to the Yes Welder Firstus MP200. <laughs> So what is the MP200? Well, MP stands for multi-process, but we're not talking multi-process like MIG, TIG, and STICK. We're talking MIG, TIG, FCAW, STICK, and plasma cutting. This is a first for Yes Welder, which may be why they called it the firstest. But this machine, which is, as I mentioned, not available yet, but it should be available for pre-order soon through a crowdfunding project, probably on Kickstarter. This machine is out of the box, ready to do MIG with gas, TIG, of course, with gas, FCAW, which of course is wire-fed gasless welding, stick welding, and plasma cutting. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because, personally, I've got two machines sitting right here just to get FCAW welding and plasma cutting together. Now, Obviously, the multi-process machine that I have does MIG, TIG, STICK, and FCAW, um, which is great, but then I have a separate machine for plasma cutting. Now, obviously, having simply two machines to do all those processes isn't a big deal, but having it all in one machine is even better, right? So I'm going to show you around a little bit of the MP200. We're going to set it up for FCAW welding. We're going to lay some beads. We're also going to do some plasma cutting. I'm going to show you how easy it is to switch between those modes, plasma cutting and FCAW. Now, I don't have a gas cylinder to do MIG with, something I have wanted to do for a long time and just haven't gotten to yet, but I may, in a soon-to-come video, invest finally in a tank of argon CO2 mix and get myself some solid core wire and finally get some real MIG welding done in the shop. Then we can compare the two on this same machine, but that'll be coming in a future video. So, for the moment, Let's just talk about those two processes. Now, first of all, there's a little bit of setup out of the box. Obviously, I already had Yes Welder's wire. I've shown you guys that on the channel before, and here it is. The machine comes out of the box ready to weld MIG, which in which case, of course, you'd have to connect your gas bottle and get yourself going MIG. So, um, in order to weld FCAW, as anyone who's familiar with these two processes, or machines that run either, is, can tell you, uh, the polarity of the machine has to be swapped. Now, I had hoped that this machine would let me swap those through the LCD panel, the circuitry inside, so that it would auto-switch, but it doesn't. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is swap the polarity of these two. Welding. Now, okay. obviously, the wire's already in here. This is a tensioner that they put in here. It's got a spring-loaded nut on it here, just like you might expect from, from most um, welders, which will let you set the tension on the wheel, you know, the spool here. This here is reverse threaded so that it doesn't come loose on you while you're welding. This holds the spool on and this sets the tension. You've got your usual setup here with the drive motor and there's a tensioner on there, which I had to fiddle with a little bit. I had it too tight and it kept loosening this thumb screw on here uh, for the drive wheel, but I got that all worked out. That was just a matter of fiddling with that until I had it all worked out. So that's inside. In order to cut, obviously you need compressed air. They provide you with an air separator slash regulator right here. It comes with a pressure gauge. The one they sent me is metric. It's in, uh, what is it? Kilograms per cubic centimeter. I don't know how to read that, but um, we're just going to have to guess with it. I assume that when they launch, they will have an option, perhaps, for U.S. versus metric. Or, honestly, I can just replace this. It's just a standard um, gauge right on here. Now, the Cut 55 DS, which is the plasma cutter that I have from Yes Welder, has that gauge on the front, and it is in U.S. In fact, I think it's a dual gauge, now that I think about it. It does both U.S. and the whatever the metric equivalent is. But anyway, they give you... 
this hose for your airline and they give you fittings and an ample amount of Teflon tape to get those all in there and then they give you hose clamps to put them on with. Are there better ways to deal with air fittings? Yes, in fact the Cut 55 came with those press lock fittings which uh, you could argue are better or worse, I don't know, but I got these on there. It took me two tries to get them both to seat without leaks. All right, the torch they give you. is much different from the torch that came with my Cut 55, which unfortunately is all spooled up over here. But the torch that came with the Cut 55 didn't have this shield on it. This is nice because the shield makes it um, harder to accidentally press that trigger. And that was my primary complaint with the Cut 55, is that you're getting yourself into position. It's really easy to tap that trigger. And with this, it's not. that's not the case. You now have to lift press so I like that um, the gun seems like it's a decent quality the MIG gun is rather nice as well it's got this nice spring-loaded uh, thing on here whatever tension relief so that you're not kinking this as you're trying to work um, it feels nice in the hand it's good and solid this is of course the same gun whether using gas or not I have flux core wire in there so that's what we'll be welding with today the ground clamp I was impressed with. This is actually a good solid ground clamp. It feels, it just feels sturdier than the one that came with the, both the Cut 55 and the MiG 205 DS. The ground clamp is shared between all the different processes, of course. You just move it around as you need to. Um, we're just gonna hook this guy in here. The plasma torch that is. And then I'll, I'll show you guys the front of the machine. I'll move the camera maybe to get that done. All right, so let's plug the machine in. Obviously, I was working around on the inside of it. You don't want to do that while it's plugged in. Okay, plugged in. Let's, there's a big red toggle switch on the back. All right, so the screen, this is where it starts up at. It's on FCAW, FCAW, because that's where I had it when I was tinkering with it before. You hit the home button, it lets you pick what you'd like here. The settings screen, which I just passed, only has settings in there for what preference you want for units. You can set it for inch or millimeters. Big deal, right? English units versus metric. We're going to set it to inch. We're going to go back home. Now, MMA, that's stick. MIG with gas. FCAW dash S. I don't really know what the dash S stands for. Folks, remember I'm a self taught welder. Lift TIG and plasma cutting. So, first we're going to do FCAW. Now, I've already loaded the wire, but a thing I did not know when I first did that is if you press, that's the wrong gun. If you press on this knob, it feeds wire for you, which is handy because uh, when you're loading the gun or when you're loading the wire you gotta load you have to spool a bunch through there so anyway the options on this page will let you if you push this knob and then you can go be go between the different settings here um, this lets you set what size wire you've got I've got 035 wire I'm gonna set that 2t versus 4t right 2 touch versus 4 touch I like 2 touch I'm gonna leave it where it is uh, this is the thickness of the material you're working with. It goes 18 gauge, 16, 14, 12, 10, and then 3 16, 1 quarter, 5 16, 3 8, and 1 half. I'm going to set it to 3 16 for now, just for my testing. And then there's actually a memory setting so that you can store your configurations for different projects and whatnot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to utilize all that much because the ability to simply set the thickness and go is really good enough for me. But you can also dial in the amperage with this knob and the voltage with this knob. Now, for cutting, if you go back home, plasma cutting, there's two touch versus four touch here, and there's a memory setting as well. And of course, you've got 
the amps and I don't know if you can you can't set the voltage here I would assume hold on let's see no this knob basically does nothing this lets you set the amps you want to out you want to cut with right it goes up to 40 amps now I'm on a 50 amp 220 circuit so I can pretty much feed whatever I want into this machine all right, so that's enough about the menus and whatnot. Like I said, there's lots of other processes that I can't try here in this shop because I'm not set up to deal with them. But we're gonna try some FCAW welding and we're gonna try some plasma cutting. So bear with me while I get some steel out and I move the camera around and we go ahead and make some smoke. All right, now we should be ready to do a little bit of a weld. All right, folks, let's lay a little bit of a bead, huh? That's how that's supposed to work. Awesome. Looking good. I like it. I like it. That nice, nice bead, nice sizzle to that. All right, you folks, come here. I'd say that's a decent bead, don't you think? All right, so what about cutting? Let's make a flap on the end of this thing. How's that sound? Let's do something that's, you know, like almost real world-like. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Well, we're gonna make two of those quick cuts. We're gonna make two of those, and then we're gonna make a perforation, and we're gonna fold this up, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna weld it. Because, you know, it sounds a little more real world then, doesn't it? Like we're actually doing something. Let's make two nice cuts here. Nice as we can. It does cut nice, I'll say that. Okay. Tip looks good. That's nice. All right, now we're going to score this. To do that, I'd like to make a nice straight line. So we're gonna do this. All right, now we got a straight edge. We're gonna cut along the straight edge just to perforate this, and then we're gonna bend it upward and weld it. This is relatively easy to work with a pair of gloves on, but it's still a little tricky. Maybe there, one that way, or maybe there we go. All right, here we go. I'm just going to go. Okay, now you've seen me do this in other videos. Basically, I've just scored this a bit. Now we're going to bend it upward. I shouldn't say scored. I've cut a, a line through it so that I can now bend it, right? So I probably don't need this much leverage, but I'm going to use it because it's at hand. This big nasty guy. Probably almost use a hand to do this. See how we're just going to bend it up. Hopefully it doesn't break off on me while I'm doing it because it is thin steel. All right, so that's, you know, close to 90. We're not going to get precise here. All right, now we're going to go back to our welding hood. And here, I'll let you see. I'll let you see how easy it is to switch the machine. All right, so there's the machine. I'll zoom in a bit. So you can see the ground clamp is currently all the way to the left-hand side. That's where it needs to be for cutting. I pop it out of here, twist and pull. Pop it into the one that's all the way to the right, right next to the, the plug for the switch for the plasma torch. And then, of course, once you've switched the clamp, 
You need to, uh, that's not what I wanted. You need to go home, switch from plasma cutting to FCAW, FCAW, right? And we should just be ready to lay a bead. Now, remember I had it set to 3 16 This is thinner than 3 16 So I burned through a little bit and I had to move fast. So sue me if the weld looks bad. And there we go, right? So that was easy. Two of the most frequently used processes you need from a welding slash cutting machine. And I just switched between them in a matter of, what did it take me? 20 seconds to move from one to the other and then switch guns. And part of that was repositioning the camera, guys. So what do you guys think of the Yes Welder first this MP200? I think it's a pretty darn cool machine. I love the fact that you can switch between processes so quickly and easily. Obviously, you're not going to be switching between, like, I don't know, FCAW and stick or MIG and FCAW, right? Because basically, once you set up a project, you're going to have a welding and a cutting method in mind. However, MIG and TIG, maybe you're going to switch between. MIG, TIG, and, and uh, plasma cutting. I mean, it's kind of great, I think, that you can do all three of those in one machine. So, what do you think of it? Are you interested in this machine? If you are, you're going to want to look in the description of this video, because down there I'm going to have a link to the crowdfunding site where you can place your pre-orders if you're interested in buying the first SMP200. I'm going to say that even for a quote-unquote beta machine, which is what I have here, I'm kind of impressed. Uh, the ability to switch between welding and cutting, I mean, for me, that's kind of a game changer. Is this the only machine on the market that does that? Probably not. In fact, I'm certain it's not. But most of those machines run for what? Two grand? Two, you want to spend two grand on a welder and cutter multiprocess machine? I don't know. I don't know where the first this is going to be priced at, but if I know yes welder, it's going to be affordable. It's going to be geared for folks like me and folks like you, if you're like me, uh, that don't have a $10,000 welding and cutting budget for your shop at home, right? We are the target audience from Yes Welder. All right, folks, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. We do a lot of reviews of machines such as this. We do a lot of fabrication and we do a lot of just plain old, old fashioned wheeling. So remember folks, get out there and wheel. I'll catch you in the next one.